They say water is life. And if that's true, then Israel should never have survived. Because this small nation surrounded by desert was born in a land that barely had enough rain to grow crops, let alone support millions of people. Yet today, Israel is one of the only countries on earth that never faces drought. In fact, it produces more water than it needs, and the world is still trying to understand how a country with almost no natural resources solved a crisis that even powerful nations have failed to control. But the answer isn't simple. It begins with a question most people never ask. How does a desert nation become a global water superpower? To understand that, you have to go back to the beginning, when Israel was new, fragile, and surrounded by uncertainty. The pioneers who arrived looked at the dry hills and the cracked earth and knew one thing. If they wanted a future here, they would have to build it with their own hands. There were no rivers waiting, no forests to cut, no rich soil to farm, only a burning sun long summers and almost no rain. But the people who came here carried something stronger than fear. They carried belief. A belief that the desert could bloom, that the impossible could be made real, and that survival was not a gift but a mission. And so the journey began. Israel's leaders realized early on that water was not just a natural resource. It was the foundation of the nation's future. Every city, every farm, every family depended on a supply that simply did not exist. The question was no longer how to find water, the question was how to create it. That idea changed everything. Because instead of waiting for rain, Israel started building systems to control water like no country had ever done before. This wasn't a miracle. It was engineering, innovation, and determination all working together. The first breakthrough came with an idea so simple and so revolutionary that it changed global agriculture forever. Drip irrigation. Instead of flooding fields with water and watching it evaporate under the hot sun, Israeli engineers designed a system that fed plants drop by drop. No waste, no loss, just pure efficiency. Every farmer in the world knows this technology today but almost no one remembers where it came from. It was born in the desert. As the population grew, the pressure rose. The Sea of Galilee, Israel's main freshwater source, began shrinking. A drought threatened the entire country, and for the first time, it seemed like the desert was winning. But instead of giving up, Israel pushed further. If nature couldn't provide enough water, then science would. Along the Mediterranean coast, engineers built massive desalination plants, some of the largest on Earth. They took seawater, filtered it, cleaned it, and turned it into drinking water pure enough for a newborn baby. And they did it on a scale the world had never seen. Today, most of Israel's water doesn't come from lakes or rivers. It comes from the sea. But even that wasn't enough, because desalination uses enormous energy and Israel needed a way to make it sustainable. So the country built solar fields and renewable energy systems to support it. They connected desalination plants, pipelines, reservoirs, and treatment centers into one massive network. A network that could move water across the entire nation like blood through veins. And then came the next breakthrough, recycling. While most countries waste billions of liters of water every day, Israel decided not to waste anything. It built one of the most advanced wastewater treatment systems in the world, purifying used water until it was clean enough for agriculture. Almost 90% of Israel's wastewater is reused. No other country comes close. This wasn't just technology. It was philosophy. The belief that every drop has value that scarcity can create innovation, and that survival requires courage. Travel south to the Negev Desert and you will see the result. Where there was nothing but sand, 
there are now rows of greenhouses, fields of crops, solar farms stretching across the horizon, research centers where scientists test new ways to grow food and heat that would kill most plants. The desert didn't disappear, but its destiny changed. Israel became one of the largest exporters of agricultural technology on Earth. Nations from Africa, Asia, and South America come here to learn how to survive drought. From drip irrigation to desalination to smart sensors, Israel built an entire industry around a crisis. It turned weakness into strength. But the story doesn't end there. Because water is not just science, it is politics. And in this region, politics is never simple. Israel shares water systems with Jordan, with the West Bank, and even indirectly with Lebanon. Every river, every aquifer, every drop carries tension. And as the climate warms, the pressure grows. Some years, the Sea of Galilee threatens to fall to dangerous levels. Some years, rainfall drops to record lows. And yet, Israel does not run out of water, because its systems are designed to survive even the harshest droughts. But there is a deeper message hidden in this story. A message about the future of humanity. As temperatures rise and rivers dry around the world, many nations will face the same question Israel faced decades ago. What do you do when nature refuses to give you what you need? Do you wait? Or do you build? Israel chose to build, and that choice changed everything. Today, if you fly over the country at night, you can see the miracle from above. A chain of glowing lights stretching from the Mediterranean coast to the heart of the desert. Desalination plants humming like engines, pipelines running under the sand, towns and farms rising in places that once seemed unlivable. It looks like a river, but not a natural one. A river made of steel, electricity, and human will. Some call it innovation, others call it survival. But whatever name you choose, the meaning is the same. Israel refused to let geography decide its fate. And this is the final truth. The world is changing. Rivers are shrinking. Heat is rising. Droughts are becoming the new normal. But Israel's story tells us something important. That sometimes the answer isn't to fear the future, but to build it. To engineer it to reshape it with imagination and determination. Because when a nation with almost no water can become a global leader in water technology, it proves something powerful. That limits are not final. That nature can be challenged. And that even in the driest desert, life can grow if someone is willing to fight for it. Israel didn't wait for rain. It created its own destiny. And in a world where billions will face water scarcity, that lesson might be the difference between survival and collapse. In the end, the story of Israel's water is not a miracle. It is a blueprint, a map for any nation brave enough to follow it. A reminder that the future belongs not to those who hope, but to those who act. And somewhere in the middle of a desert that once seemed hopeless, a small country proved that the impossible can be built drop by drop.